the Wednesday call. Good evening, good morning, good morning, good morning. Pastor Collins, good morning, good seeing you. Mr. Casey Carter, good seeing you. Pat and Frank uh, up, up in uh, up Bowman, up in Elk Grove, California. Hey, sir, thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Pat Robinson, how you doing, dear? Miss Melissa Vaughn, good morning, beautiful lady. Thank you so much. Miss Caroline Baker, Mr. Ismail, thank you. Hello, 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 sensational in Florida. Let's see what kind of glass that girl got on. All right, there you go. <laughs> Mr. Del Ransom, good morning, sir. Good seeing you, sir. Uh, Miss Valinda Batiste, good morning. I love those glasses. Mr. Dave Culver, did you get a haircut? Yes, sir. I like that, Professor. It looks good. I, I just did mine, too. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Driesel, director, Mr. Julian Lewis, good morning. I like that T-shirt with the beautiful ocean of California, the coastline. Ms. Konohara, good morning. I'm in Japan, and I will be doing on the 19th the regional direct, I will be doing the ooh, the regional out in Japan. Wow, I love this this Zoom. I'm, I'm going to be in Japan, but I'm going to be here in Vegas. Ain't that great? I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mr. Payon, thank you so much. Yes, I will be in Japan on the 19th. I love Zoom. I love Zoom. Miss Marie, good morning. Good seeing you as well this morning. Mr. Chris McDowell, good morning. Oh, regional director, Miss Natasha Ismail, good morning. Thank you, Carter. Mr. Freddie Sherman, thank you so much. Mr. Sam Foster down in Sandy, uh, down in uh, Dallas, Texas. Mr. David Wright, Ms. Zoe Duffy, part of the Baker organization. Mr. Ed Navarro, thank you. Mr. Bill Bailey, good morning, sir. Celia, we thank you up in Woodland, California. Regional Director, Mr. Marvin Carter, Mr. Winston Herber, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow, we got a good group of people on here today. Look at the, look at this crowd. Hey, Miss Evelyn Fibbs, Regional Director out in Fresno. Mr. Miss Rose Guerrero, Regional Director out in Fresno, good morning. Mr. Chris King, good morning. Regional Director also out in Fresno. Miss Evelyn Fibbs, I said that. Al Randolph, good morning, sir. Wow, Miss Eileen, good morning, good morning, good morning. Miss Ursula Allen, good morning, dear. Miss Tracy Gilmore, part of the Baker organization. Oh, Regional Vice President. Wow, Ms. Giles and Driscoll, good morning, dear. Thank you so much. Ms. Martinez in Iowa, thank you. Mr. Harrison Mills, good morning. Ms. Natalie Parr over in Vegas. Mr. Brian Baker in Las Vegas as well. Ms. Anna, thank you so much in Texas. Ms. Tamara McDonald out in the San Diego area. Mr. Harold Gaston, good, Gaston, good morning, sir. Ms. Angelina, good morning. Oh, wow, we got a good group out here. Hey, folks, we got a great call lined up today, but let me say about tonight, I've been kind of resting up uh, trying to, uh, yeah, resting up for tonight because tonight we're going to do that. I'm going to do a live presentation one more time, one more call. I'm going to do live with your people watching me fail, okay? So come watch me fail. And I'm going to be calling your people. And here again, one thing, make sure that you understand that between 6 and eight, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Coast time, they've seen the video, they've seen the opportunity, and all I'm going to do is do the follow-up call for you, okay? So make sure you got your names numbers and let them know I'm going to be calling them and you get a hold of them and let them know that. So it's very crucial. Last Wednesday when I did it, we had so much fun. Two and a half hours, I was still ready to go. So I'm trying to rest up today for tonight because I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. But here again, I'm going to still kick it and we're going to make it have a fun time tonight. Maybe you guys will learn how to make proper phone calls and just bond with people and we'll go through that tonight. But today, oh my goodness, this young man razzled and dazzles last Wednesday did such a super job, such a young age, got started in ACN. Uh, he's going to be the youngest senior vice president on record. He is just tearing the business up. And let me just say this. When you come from the inner cities of Baltimore, you have nothing to, but crime and, and things that are negative around you to go do, and you're inspired to go do it, but you fight the feeling or you fight the wave because you know that's going to end up where you don't want to end up. It takes a lot of gumption. And to me, that takes courage. Now, I see all these people talking about courage. No, no, that takes courage to live in that environment, to fight out of that environment, to better yourself and not to get involved in that environment and then go back to that environment, bring people out of that environment. To me, that's what I call a hero. I, you know, people, everybody's a hero these days. They did jack. No, that's, guys, watch words. Words are very powerful. So this young man to me is a hero because he went back and reached back to people there to show them there's a way out without doing the wrong things, or the, you know, the wrong things, period. Let's just say that. So without further ado, uh, dear friend and a wonderful speaker, wonderful job last week. I don't know if you guys caught last week, but if you didn't go back and look at it because there was so much juice on there, there was so much meat on that bone. Without further ado, Regional Vice President, Mr. Shaquille Cooper. Hello, hello, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. 
Thank you. Thank you. Before I do say anything about myself, I do want to thank you, Mr. Thomas, uh, for welcoming me on this call again. You know, it's really a blessing and an honor uh, to be on here to share, you know, some information and some knowledge with everyone on the call today. I mean, I had put together some great information for you guys today. You know, every week, you know, I try to come with something different, try to give you guys something that, you know, you guys can leave with and go out there and apply. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to start it off today with a uh, video. And the reason why, because I want to prep your mindset before I go into the information so that you guys can be able to soak in, you know, everything that I'm going to share today. So hold on one second, you know, while I share my screen. And play. Here is a simple lesson. We've got to learn how to make decisions. And most people don't know how to make decisions. This is not a statement of theory. This is a fact. I was doing this when I was cleaning floors. No education. I didn't know how to run a business. This is powerful stuff. That's why successful people make decisions so fast. They know what they want. Let those lines represent levels of vibration. Every frequency is connected to the one above and the one below. They're all connected. There's no line of demarcation where one frequency stops and another starts. They're all connected and they're all together. Think of this, that's my phone. That represents my phone. This represents your phone. If I want to talk to you on your phone, I've got to get on your frequency. The second I'm on your frequency, you and I are connected. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. If I dial your number, boom, like that, I'm connected to you. Makes no difference where you are. I could take a picture here. I can hit send, and simultaneous with me hitting it, you've got it. There's a great lesson here for us. We seem to have a basic understanding of this. I think what I'm saying here, everyone in the room understands this when we're using our phones. However, when it comes to life, we get lost. We don't seem to understand it. Well, let's try and understand it with respect to decisions. We operate on frequency. My voice is being amplified on a particular frequency. You and I think on frequencies. Thought is energy. Do you know your thoughts are the most potent form of energy there is? Your thought would make the laser beam look like a toy. You'll have a friend a long ways away from you, and um, you're thinking about them a lot. And damn, if the phone doesn't ring, it's them. You see, you're thinking. Your thoughts activated cells in their brain. That caught them thinking of you, and they acted. They phoned you. We do this all the time, okay? Now, let's suppose this is the frequency that you're thinking on. If that's the frequency you're thinking on, that's gonna dictate the results that you get. The results you get are nothing but the manifestation of your own thinking. We become what we think about. That is the one point that every great leader has agreed on. They've disagreed in virtually every other idea, but that one, we become what we think about. Now let's clearly understand nothing is created or destroyed. All science and all theology teach that. All the ideas, it's all the knowledge there ever was or ever will be is on the press. It's all here. We didn't have to get it. We've already got it. What we do is got to do is tune into it. So let's say that's where we want to go. This is where I am. That's where I want to go. How do I get there? Well, I'll say I'm going to do that. This is where the average person's thinking. You can relate to that. I'm going to do that as soon as the kids are out of school. That's not going to do it. I'm going to start my own business as soon as I get the money. And you know, you do that, and pretty soon the decision fades, and then the goal fades. Why? Well, you didn't get the money, so you couldn't do it. Problem was, didn't have the money. You talk to anybody that's high in finance, and they'll tell you the money is never the problem. Ideas are the problem. You got the right idea, you'll always find the money. But you see, we're thinking down here on this frequency. 
your mind and your thoughts are down here on this frequency. What you want is up here on a higher frequency. You cannot get what you want up there when your thoughts are down here. Your mind and thoughts must focus on the same frequency as what you want. If you want it, it's already here. And you make a decision, it's got to be a committed decision. You say, I'm doing that. Now, the second you make a committed decision, everything starts to change. You begin to think and act like the person you want to become. You stop thinking down there. You're thinking up here now. You're thinking on a higher frequency. Want is the only prerequisite for making a decision. Doesn't matter whether you have the money. But do you really want it? If you really want it, you will get it. But you've got to really want it. Yet you also have to understand that everything you need is here. But you've got to be specific. You could be a waiter. Somebody leaves you a nice tip. You got more money. That's not it. You've got to be specific how much more money. You need to know exactly what you want. Yet you don't have to know where it's going to come from. You do not have to understand all the basic principles between sending the picture to the person on the other side of the world for it to get there. All you have to do is know how to do it. Want is the only prerequisite for making a decision. That is so important. You should write it down. Write it somewhere that you're going to see it often. Maybe get a sign and put it up in your house. This is such powerful information. You'd think it would be taught in all schools. The truth is it's not. That's rather sad because it can be, but it's not. You only have to know what you want. It doesn't matter whether you've got the money. That makes no difference. It doesn't matter whether you've got the resources. That doesn't make any difference. It doesn't matter if you know the right people. It doesn't make any difference. Now, this sounds so preposterous to a person that's never studied this. Listen, the money is here. You know that song, love is in the air? You know the song? We'll change the lyrics. The money's in the air. <laughs> it is. When you're in harmony with it, you will never stop it flowing to you. Money goes where it's invited, and it stays where it's welcome. Listen to most people. The way they talk about money, you think it was the worst stuff in the world. I get so sick of it. I just never have enough money. Well, they get very angry. Why don't you change your attitude? Now, you see, that really sounds stupid. Here they are, they're in need of money, and somebody says, change your attitude. They don't even know what attitude is. Yet, it sounds like we need so much more than attitude change. But really, that's all I changed. So you've got to understand what attitude is. See, there's a power flowing to and through you, Daisy. It's flowing right into your consciousness. It has no form. It's a clear, unadulterated power, and as it flows into your conscious mind, you have the ability to make out of it anything you want. And you know something? I don't know if you know what you want, but you are a persistent individual. You are naturally persistent. You're genetically designed that way. We can do anything. We've got the faculties to do the job. Most of us are going by what we hear, see, smell, taste, touch. But your lessons come from your inside world, not outside, inside. And you have to use your higher faculties. Perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition. Want is the only prerequisite for making a decision. You've got to get this, burn this into your mind. You don't even have to understand this in any depth. Just accept it. If you really want it, that's all you need. You don't need the money. You don't need to know how you're going to get it. You don't need to know any of that stuff. But you've got to really want it. You've done this. You've done this in different times, not really understanding what you've done. Look at this. Paradigms and cybernetics. Anybody that's read Psycho-Cybernetics, Psycho-Cybernetics was written by... Um, Napoleon Hill. It is so good. Cybernetics is the science of control and communication in the animal and some machines. Uh, cybernetic controls your thermostat. or con The thermostat controls the house. The cybernetic system's in the thermostat. It'll change the temperature of the house. It'll turn the heat on, turn it off. Turn the air on, turn it off. Automatically, when you deviate from the set goal. Goals maybe to have the house at 69 or 70. It'll hold it at that. If somebody leaves the door open and it gets too hot or too cold, the thermostat will shift it. You'll change the air conditioning or the furnace. It's all done automatic. Well, your paradigm is like a thermostat. It's like a cybernetic system. Paradigms and cybernetics are both control systems. They operate essentially on the same principle. Both maintain a definite course of action and will not deviate from the course that has been established. 
Well, most people's paradigm has them working toward a bad end. Most people's paradigm has them working toward debt. Most people's paradigm has them working towards dumb jobs. You must alter the paradigm if you desire to achieve improved results. A company operates on a paradigm. A country operates on a paradigm. It's called culture. You have a culture in your family. The family has a paradigm. Family operates a certain way. Well, it's something the family always does. And if one of the kids wants to go off, what the hell are you doing? We've always done this. It's a family. Oh. Let me let you in on a secret, Dad. I'm changing the paradigm. You've got to be strong. But if you're going to be strong, you've got to be aware. Awareness is power. We haven't become aware. School focuses on the intellect. The degree. Be able to shape your future after we were only able to change your paradigm. Always be under construction. Always. Should never be satisfied with where you are. When I was a little kid, Grandma always told me I should be satisfied. Grandma was wrong. She was like an angel of God, a dear little old woman, but she was wrong. Your results should always be under construction. You always want to be improving them. Now you got to ask, are you ready to change? Now you got to ask yourself, are you willing to change? So that video, honestly, hold on one second. Let me put my Bluetooth thing because I'm about to go. Okay. So that video, honestly, right there, you know, just looking at it, it blew my mind. And what it did was it just let a light bulb off my mind and it lets me know that I'm on the right track in life. And what I realized that I'm on the right track in life, meaning that I understand that I might not have everything that I want right now, but one thing I do realize is that I can achieve everything that I do want in this world. And the only way it's going to happen it is going to happen if I make it happen. And everything starts off as a thought, as a thought in your mind. So what are you thinking about? What do you really want? Like I said last week, what do you really want? And the reason why most people don't know or don't have the things that they really want in life is because they don't really know what they want. So if you don't know what you want in life, how do you think in the world that you will be able to attract all of those things that you want. A lot of people, they said, I, I need to make more money. But in reality, their mindset about money is very negative. You know, people say all the time, you know, money is the root of all evil when it's really poverty. Being poor is the root of all evil because if you're poor, you can't help yourself. So how can you help somebody else? So you have to ask yourself the question, number one, know your why. What is your why? If you look on the right side of the screen, that's my personal family. I created my own family and that's my why. If you look at my son's face, that's his face every single day. Not the one on the top, but the one on the bottom. And the reason why he's happy every single day because he don't have to be somewhere he don't want to be. He don't have to be around people he don't want to be. He don't have to be places he don't want to be. And his life is happy every single day because I knew that when I got involved in this business, that one day I was going to start my own family. And I knew that one day that I wanted my son to live a lifestyle that I always dreamed about. And it's not just about money or materialistic things because I don't buy my son a bunch of materialistic things. Honestly, my son is three years old. Since he's been born, the only thing I had to purchase for him was diapers and wipes. Other than that, he has everything he needs from his grandparents, my parents, everybody give me every single thing I need for my son and I don't have to ask for it. And the reason why, because they see that I'm out there working hard every single day and doing whatever it takes to provide for my family without having to call other people and ask for help. And there's nothing wrong with asking for help, but I can tell you that the moment that you take responsibility and do things on your own, you will now attract other people into your life that's going to help you get everything that you need. So know your why. And to thrive and be successful in anything in life, you must know your why. This is your driving force and motivating factor for making something happen. Otherwise, you won't be bothered to get it done. If you don't have a why, you will not continue to persist when things get hard. And that's one of the reasons why most people quit 
and give up when they're doing something in life. Let's say somebody wanted to go out to school and be a doctor and it was really, really hard. They gave up. Why? Because they didn't have a big enough why. And if you say, for example, right, you want to be a doctor. Why do you want to be a doctor? Because you want to save the world. So just think about it, right? If you truly wanted to save the world, no matter what happens throughout your journey, it's not going to deter you from accomplishing that why. So what are your reasons for considering starting an online business and network marketing? Why are you involved in network marketing? Most people don't even understand why they're involved in network marketing. All they see is an opportunity to make extra money. But guess what? There's a lot of ways to make money. There's a lot of opportunities to make money. But why do you truly want to be involved in the network marketing industry? And I'll tell you my reason why I want to be involved in the network marketing industry. And it's because I can give the everyday average person an opportunity to do big things. And guess what? I know it's possible because I I'm just a regular average person and I got involved in this opportunity and I've done big things. And it's not because I'm special. I just really understood why I was getting involved in the industry. So you have to know why, what is your reason why? And if you don't know your reason why, you need to put it in front of you every single day. When I look at my phone, what do I see? I see my why. This is my why. This is why I work every single day. This is why I grind. This is why I do whatever it takes so that I can give my family the lifestyle of just being able to do what they want to do whenever they want to do. So you have to figure out what is your reason why. So before you get off the call today, if you're taking notes, write down what's your reason why. And I want you to look at it every single day. Know your why, because if you don't know your why, when life gets in the way, you will give up. You will quit when time get hard. And if you understood my story, I've been through a lot of ups. I've been through a lot of downs, but I've never gave up and I've never quit. Never quit. You know, if I was feeling sad one day and my team gave me a call and said they need me to do a meeting, I'm not going to say, you know, I can't do the meeting today. I'm guessing what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull my pants up and I'm going to do the meeting. Too many people, you know, when times get hard, they just sit in a dark room and they cry about life instead of just putting that big boy pants on and just doing it. Just making a decision that I'm going to do whatever it takes no matter what, because guess what? If you give up and if you quit, all you're teaching your family and the people around you to do is quit when times get hard. Why not you be the example of the person that's persistent? Be persistent. If you're not persistent in life, guess what? Life will continue to test you every single day, right? Don't be, listen, don't pester your friends and family members about doing the business. Let me tell you the secret. Guess how many people in my family do the business? Zero. My family have watched me haven't worked a job since November of 2013. And still to this day, I was having a conversation with my mom yesterday. And she said, you need to go get a job. You need to go get a job. And I'm like, for what? If I haven't had a job in seven years, why would I want to go get a job now? And we just always have this conversation playing around. And she know for a fact that no matter what she seen me go through, she never seen me give up on my dreams and said, you know what? I'm going to go get a job. And there's nothing wrong with a job. But guess what? A job is not in my goal and my vision. And the reason why, because I understand that the world is going online. The world is shifting. If you haven't looked around, businesses are closing down. Small businesses are getting hurt and they all are shifting online. If you look at the companies that's thriving today, companies like Amazon, companies like DoorDash, all of these mobile online companies, you know, think about companies where now you can get your groceries shipped to your home. Literally, the world is set up now where the companies that's making people lives convenient and easier are the people that strive in the new economy. And the new economy is online. So the absolutely last thing you wanna do is piss off any family and any friends and have them call you crazy because you won't leave them alone. Stop begging people to do the business with you. Listen, if you can become wealthy or rich or successful, you know, with your friends and your family members, we can agree that you probably would already be there. See, I stop caring about what my friends think. I stop caring about what my family members think. I stop caring about what anybody think about what I'm doing because nobody is going to get me to where I need to go. Nobody has my vision. Nobody can see what I truly want for my life. And there's nothing wrong with sharing the opportunity with them. Because guess what? That's what we do. You're supposed to share the opportunity with them. But listen, if they're not interested in what you're doing, do not take the note as a note and move the hell on. Move on. Who cares if they say no? 
Who cares? Why do you care so much about people that's not helping you accomplish your goals and your vision? Why do you care so much? So from there, these can often be the people who you are very skeptical. Listen, they, they might be skeptical and they might not be skeptical you know, about you. They might be skeptical about themselves because I understood that no matter what I do, if I put my all into it, I can become successful. If I wanted to become a successful plumber, I know for a fact I'll become a successful plumber. Because guess what? When I was working at Applebee's, I was the best servant in Applebee's. I was there every single day. They knew that if somebody called off of work, they can call me and I showed up. And I've never missed a day. I was never late. I was always there because everything that I do, I put my all into it. But once you know, people see your success, they'll be more open to opportunities. You know, I was listening to a um a video yesterday from Muhammad Ali. And, you know, he was just telling me that, you know, in the video, what really resonated to me, he was like, you know, when you don't have nothing, you know, when people know you for who you are and, you know, you're trying to come up, you know, most people are going to be skeptical about you. But the moment that you get the Rolls Royces, you get the big house, you get the big everything that they wanted, the Rolex watches, all the materialistic things, because most people, for some odd reason, relate materialistic things to success. That's just the word that we in, right? So most people have to see that you have the things first before they are open to the opportunity. Because I remember when I first started, I had to basically, in a way, convince people to do the business because they knew me from working at Applebee's. But the moment I bought my dream car, the moment I started living in the condos, everybody want to do the business with me. Everybody that was hating on me now got involved in my business. And it was because, guess what? They saw the success. They saw the materialistic things. And guess what? The proof was all in the pudding. And I'm not just telling you to, to be successful to get all of those things. But guess what? I believe that we are put on this earth to live in a life of abundance. Why should we live in lack? If there's other people out there living in abundance, why should we live in lack? So guess what? Do not beg your friends. Do not beg your family members. Go out there and make it happen without them because nine times out of 10, your friends and your family members are not going to be the ones that help you become successful. From there, be genuine and ethical, meaning that when you are ethical, you're doing things by the rules. Out of all of the network marketing tips that I have to share, this is probably one of uh, one of that that makes or breaks most careers. And the reason why most people you know, don't continue to have success is because they're not ethical. Listen, if you can show up with integrity in everything that you do be genuine and be ethical people will trust you listen if you're not a trustworthy people nobody will want to do business with you would you want to do business with someone that's known for stealing lying cheating and all of those things no you don't want to do business with those people so for many years you know, direct selling and network marketing have received a bad reputation due to reps who have used hype and oftentimes deceptions in order to get new recruits to sign on. You don't want to be that person. Just be real. Be yourself. Listen, I'm me. I don't have no jewelry on. Listen, none of that. But guess what? Every call I do, I'm myself. And if people don't want to do business with me as myself, then they don't need to do business when I have all of the shiny things. Because they are not the people that I'm looking to do business with anyway. I'm looking for the people that's willing to work with me where I'm at in order to help me to get where I'm trying to go. And I'm going to bring them along. So guess what? It's from the behavior that many people are led to believe that MLM companies themselves encourage this behavior when in all honesty, they simply don't. And if you know anything about ACN, they are here to help us out. They do not want us out there making a company look bad. And the reason why you, if you go out there and make the company look bad, you're not putting everybody else in jeopardy. Cause think about it, right? We have been in business almost 30 years. We can agree we want to be in business for another 30 years, another 50 years, right? So legitimate MLM companies, they want to live forever. And they expect you to be honest in how you deal with customers and how you deal with potential recruits. If you truly believe in a product and if you truly believe in a service and the benefit that it can bring a person, your genuine enthusiasm and the quality of the product and the service will be enough to promote it. You don't have to overhype. Listen, avoid making any of the overtop or exaggerated or false claims that just be you. Just be authentic and be your true self. People will follow you just being you. And I noticed that because today when I do webinars and things like that, I'm me. And this is me. 
I'm not going to sell you no dream. I'm not going to sell you something that's not true. I'm going to tell you that it's going to take hard work. It's going to take dedication. It's not going to be easy because if it's easy, then it's sleazy. My journey in this business has not been easy. It's just I haven't showed people all of the tough times and the things that I've went through. And I tell people all the time, yes, I made a lot of money, but yes, I lost a lot of money also, because guess what? If you have the money, you don't have the knowledge of what to do with it. You'll always be broke, just like a person that won the lottery. In a couple of years, they'll be right back in the same situation that they was in, because guess what? I'd rather have the knowledge before I have the money. And people might think I'm crazy, but I understood that. Guess what? Look at people in the NFL. Look at people in the NBA. Why do most millionaires go broke? And it's because lack of knowledge. You don't want to have the money and not know what to do with it when you get it. So throughout this journey, you can earn while you learn. And too many people don't get that. And they have to understand that, listen, you're not going to get rich overnight. But guess what? What if you learned and you learned about things in life that's going to help you in all aspects? And I'm going to give you a quick example. Before I got involved in ACN, like I said, I was a young kid. I just want you know designer things and stuff like that. But now, by, since I've been involved in business, you know I've learned about credit. You know I learned about financial literacy. I learned about how to live below your means. I learned how to invest into yourself, invest into your business. See, when most people was laughing at me, thinking that I, I lost everything, the money that I was making, I was putting it into the knowledge and the information so that I can continue to be here for the long run. Because everyone I started with, they're not here today. And it's people that I started with and they was at the top, they hit SVP and all kind of things. But why am I still here? They're not here. What's the difference? It's because I never stopped learning. It's not just about the money. Guess what? They print money every single day. It's no lack of it. And when you have the mindset and understood that there's no lack of money out here, the goal is not about money anymore. The goal is about knowledge, information, what to do with it. Who can you help? I remember when I was paying out of pocket, feeding the homeless people every single Sunday for an entire year out of my pocket with my team. I didn't ask my mentors, hey, what do you think about me feeding the homeless people downtown? No, I didn't, I didn't call them and ask them, hey, can you give me some money? You know, over time, you know, they decided that they wanted to chip in and help. But guess what? I made a decision that I wanted to give back. I wanted to help because I remember driving downtown, going into my condo, but every time I got off the highway, there was homeless people sleeping on the side of the road. And me, I have a big heart. I love helping people. I've helped a lot of people that stabbed me in the back. And guess what? I still continue to help people because it's in my heart to help people. I'm not going to let one bad apple ruin the whole bunch. I'm not just going to do that. I'm going to continue to help people. And that's why today I continue to help people throughout this business and throughout other things that I plan on doing, right? So sponsor, don't recruit. One of the great advantages of building the MLM business is the potential to bring in new business builders and profit from the sale that they make in their business. Now, you may be thinking, isn't that using you? Isn't that using other people? Isn't that selfish? While it may seem like that in reality, you are being rewarded for helping other people become successful, right? Why would you not want to be rewarded for helping people, right? Because I understood that one of my mentors, you know, Zig Ziglar said that, you know, if you help everybody get what they get, you'll get what you need to get. So guess what? Help other people accomplish their goals, their vision, and your vision and your goals is already taken care of, right? But in order for them to truly succeed, you have to take your role as being a trainer and leader seriously not just rack up as many recruits as possible quality over quantity let me repeat it quality over quantity there's a lot of people that get a lot of reps so guess what they have no leaders the business is all about finding leaders developing leaders because there are some people that might not be a leader yet but i, I heard this one quote that said you know don't be afraid you know of the of the sh of the sheep that's leading the lions be afraid of the lion that's leading a bunch of sheep because guess what a lion can turn a bunch of sheep into a bunch of warriors and i can tell you that i've helped a lot of people go from wimps people that didn't know anything about business they didn't believe in themselves they just they just didn't believe that they can do anything but now today there are some of the best people that's involved in the industry right so the focus should always be on the success of those you help in the business not solely on you it can't just be about you i'm sorry listen it can't just be about you this business you got to help other people 
If you're not a people person, guess what? You need to become a people person because you will not last long in this business if you truly don't have the, the care in your heart to help other people. So again, sponsor, help. Do not just focus on recruiting and just getting a whole bunch of people in. Quality over quantity. Repeat it again quality over quantity. I plan on being here for a very, very, very long time. So I will continue to focus on quality instead of quantity, right? And don't fake it till you make it. Instead of faking it till you make it, why not faith it till you make it? Why not have the faith that you can really be and do and have everything that you truly want out of this business or in life? Guess what? This part of network marketing tip is what's going to guarantee you success. And it's super important, right? Don't do it. Even if your mentor told you to do it, don't do it. I'm not faking anything for anybody. I'm going to be myself and either you take me as I am or you continue to do what you need to do. But I have to be honest. Listen, and I've made mistakes in the past, right? But I was young, you know, showing people the cars and things like that because where I'm from, to see a young guy go from Applebee's to literally driving my dream car at 21, living... People my age never done that before. They never seen it. And it made so many people truly believe that, wow, I can really be, do, and become and have what I want. Because I remember this guy saying that he's going to do this. And he actually went out there and did it. All I did was be an example. I wasn't living a fake life. I was showing people my real life. My team, they lived with me. They, they drove in the cars. They lived in the home. They was taking care. I was taking care of my entire organization. And they really believed because they seen that I wasn't faking it. They knew for a fact that everything that I was saying on the stage, everything that I was saying in meetings, it was true. And when people know what you're saying is true, they will believe you. You want to show what you do daily. Show people you're doing webinars. The way the world shift now. Before that, listen, I was showing people I was doing PBRs every single day. And if you ever follow me on social media, you knew I just have a post. I had a million likes and comments on Facebook. And that was four years ago. How in the world do a regular average person from Baltimore City, Applebee's, get involved in a business with no business background or anything, and in a couple of years, he have over a million likes on Facebook, and you can only have 5,000 friends? That means that people was really into what I was doing because they saw that it was real. People knew me. They knew that I didn't have some uncle that had a bunch of money, and it passed down to me. They didn't see that. They saw the real. They saw that I came from nothing. I came from a country called Trinidad in the Caribbean islands at, a, at the age of nine years old. And I had a dream of becoming successful as a business owner because I wasn't legal to get a job until I was 17 years old. So for all of those years when I couldn't get a job, all I knew was I got to be on, I got to be a boss. I got to be a boss because guess what? I'm I already wasted half of my life, you know, relying on getting some paperwork in order to get a job. But then I realized that a year later, two years later that I didn't even need it because I could have became my own business owner. So you got to understand that do not lie about your results because you will get a bad reputation fast. And do you want that? No, I thought so. You don't want that, right? You want a great reputation. And that's why I still have a great reputation because I'm not lying to anybody about anything. I'm an open book. You Listen, nobody can say anything about me that you probably already don't know. What are they going to say? Oh, you know, he's not who he used to be. I'm way better than who I used to be. It's not about the things that I show you because I understand that always show less than you have. Always speak less than you know. See, I move different. You know, I don't have to be in the front. Listen, I took the time to fall back so that my team can be the deal. And now that they're the deal, I'm about to promote two RVPs in the next 60 days. I promise you it's going to happen. Because I'm not, I'm not trying to make myself the deal. You know, it's so crazy when my mentors and them, they post a cause and my team is doing the cause. They're running their own show because I took the time to fall back so that they can become the deal. Because I know that if I'm always in a room, I'm always going to be the deal because of who I am. And I don't always want to be the deal. Other people have, you have to put other people in position so that they can believe in themselves, so that they can feel, you know, the things that you feel. You have to show people, you know, that, listen, you can also get there. And I had business partners of mine that, listen, I remember, and when I just, listen, let me tell you a crazy story, right? I just came in town to Maryland on Saturday, right? And my close business partner was about to be RVP, right? And I told the story last week, right? But this weekend was the first time that I went to her condo, right? 
I'm talking about one of the highest condos in downtown Baltimore. And I'm like, I remember when I did your first meeting in your mom's basement. I remember when I did your first meeting at your mom's house and the ceiling was leaking on the guests. To now when I go over her mom's house, it looks like a whole new house. When I go to her home, I can overlook the whole entire city. And I know that I played a big part in that by being there every step of the way and helping my people get to where they need to go. It's not just about me because I know I got to help other people, right? Believe in yourself, right? With working on your mindset, you will improve this part too. But many people think that they first have to see the results. Then they will believe they were able to succeed. What? Listen, you got to see it here before you see it here. You got to see it in your mind first before you see it in, in real life, right? You can't wait till you get the car to say, you know what? I believe in the business or you get the home. No, believe it first in your mind. And I promise you, it will happen. Don't worry about when it's going to happen. Just know for a fact that it will happen. Did you ever hear someone say, ask, believe, receive? Ask, believe, receive. Let's break this down, right? Ask. You have to ask for what you want. That means that you have to know exactly what you want and write down those goals. Write down those goals. Listen, if you're not writing down your goals, you're already lost. You're not even in the game. You don't even have a, a uniform on. You don't, you're not even in the game. That's the first step is writing down your goals. Believe. It means that you have to believe in yourself and in achieving the goals even if they're still far away. I have a lot of goals that's still far away, but I believe it. I believe that one day I can own 100 acres of land. That's my goal. I'm going to go to own over 100 acres of land before I turn 30 years old. And most people might be thinking, why do you want to, why not? Why not? Why not own 100 acres of land? Because guess what? They're not making any more of it. And those are just some of my goals. My goals are so big, it scares me sometimes. But if your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough, right? And then receive, achieving your goals, right? You have to know for a fact that you will achieve your goals. But first step is writing it down, having a journal, right? And this weekend, I was just moving out, you know, of my place near D.C., right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm moving to Houston, Texas for, for, for good, right? So I realized that when I went into the closet, right, I had a duffel bag and it was like 35 journals in it. I'm talking about the duffel bag so heavy, I forgot that it was in the closet. But I'm like, I've been writing down goals for the past seven plus years. And some of those goals are starting to come into fruition, right? And guess what? You don't have to focus on when you're going to achieve them. Just know for a fact that you will achieve them, right? And have a great attitude. Attitude is important because your attitude will define your altitude, right? So what is a great attitude in network marketing? To sum it up, it is positive, happy, and grateful, right? And I can tell you, you know, a great, you know, affirmations to write down before you write down your goals. Always say, I am happy and grateful now that, dot, dot, dot. Always write down, I am happy and grateful now that, right? And you say grateful for what, right? You know, some people might be saying, why am I grateful? I'm not seeing results in my business. And that's why you're not seeing results because you're not even grateful that you have a business. You should be grateful just for being alive. You should be grateful for opening your eyes this morning, for your family, for your friends, for your, even having a business, just having an opportunity. And I can go on and on and on and on and on, but guess what? If you're not grateful, you're not gonna accomplish anything in life, right? That's the first step is being grateful, right? The more you're grateful, the more you'll have in life. And yes, even more profit in your network marketing and business because it's all connected, your attitude, is one of network marketing tips that will guarantee you success. You attract who you are, how you feel, and what energy you are giving away. And that's why you have to read personal development books every single day. I don't leave the house without, you know, my network marketing, um, network marketing, building an empire book. I don't. And I have many other books also, but I know for a fact that that's, that's network marketing Bible. You know, a lot of people read the Bible every single day. I do too. I read the network marketing Bible every single day because I want to learn new things every single day about the industry that I plan on being one of the best to ever do it and to go down in history as one of the best to ever help as many as millions of people, you know, across the world. That's my goal. I want to be one of the best. And listen, if you don't want to be one of the best, that's you. But I want to be one of the best because what is the point of doing something if you don't plan on being the best? If you're a trash man, be the best trash man. If you're a hairstylist, be the best hairstylist. 
If you're a dentist, be the best dentist. Be the best at whatever you want to do, but be the best at it, right? From there, never quit. There will be obstacles testing you. If you have what it takes to be a leader in network marketing, maybe your mentor will quit or join another company. We see it happen all the time. And like I said, I don't follow quitters because guess what happened? A lot of the quitters, they always bust a U-turn and come right back to the ACN. I don't know why, but they realize that the grass is not always green on the other side. Stop chasing the fast money. I want the long-term money. I want to be in a company that I know for a fact that's going to be here for, for the long run, right? You know, from there, you want to invest a lot of your time, but in return, you won't see an increase in profit, right? Guess what? Never quit. Even if you've been in the business for years and you haven't seen the increase in profit that you want, never quit. Because guess what? If this is already happening to you, keep going. Remember this. If you quit, you will have to do this all over again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Do you want to do this all over again? Do you want that? No, then suck it up. You got this. You can go to another company, but you got to do it all over again. You got to get reps. You got to get customers. No matter where you go, you have to get reps. You have to get customers, right? So no matter what you do, you have to do it all over again. So instead of quitting and starting over, listen, if you're going through hell, you might as well keep going. If you are going through hell, you might as well keep going. Why? Because guess what? There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I can tell you because I've been there. I've been through depression. I've been in dark places where I didn't even want to leave the room. You know, I remember my son, mom used to come in, come in the room and she used to open up the window and I used to be like, close the windows. She used to be like, no, you need to stop being in the dark. But I remember for a, a couple months in my life that I was in a dark place. I did not want to be outside. I wore dark clothes. I didn't want the windows open. I used to sit in a dark room and I was depressed because I'm like, man, I worked so hard and I went through so much. And I'm like, I just felt like I was nothing. Everyone was laughing at me. Family was looking at me crazy, having to move back into my mom's house, live in that closet. And every morning when they got ready to go to work, they had to climb on top of the air mattress to get their clothes for work and watch me, you know, writing my notes, writing my goals, writing my vision. And they literally watched me just work and grind and get myself out of that situation and get back on my feet. And the person I am today is, is the way better person than I was years ago. So no matter what you're going to go through in life, guess what happens, right? You can get out of it because I've been there. I've been through most of what probably everyone is called probably is going to go through in this opportunity or you probably don't have to because I'm going to tell you things that you don't have to go through that I went through because everything that I went through it was a learning experience for me I didn't know anyone that went through those things before I didn't know anyone that got involved in, in this business and had a lot of success and went through these things or came from my type of background so everything that I went through was a first time experience but I had to go through it right I had to go through it right because guess what I had to get me out of my situation. I wasn't looking for my mom to help me. I wasn't looking for my mentor to help me. Nobody can help me but me. And when you make up your mind that nobody's going to help you but you, nobody's going to get you the way you need to go but you, guess what happened? Your, everything is going to change for you. It's not about you. It's about them. You have to remember that you ain't selling something that you have to focus on the good of your prospect or your customer, right? Stop thinking about how much profit you will make because you will actually scare the customer and potential business partner away, right? Therefore, your profits will be zero. Remember the time when somebody was selling you something? Let's say you went to the mall and the salesperson, they was just trying to force something on you, right? They was just pushy. And you know for a fact that they was literally just trying to get a sale because everything that you said you like, they loved it too. And it's like, let's be real. I read the, you know, purchase something from somebody that was real to me, be like, no, nah, I don't get that one. You should get that one. And explain to me why I like it. And guess what? That's the type of people that I want to do business with. You know, but listen, if, they're act if people are asking you the right questions and they're being really interested in you and your needs, and guess what happened? Naturally, they'll make a sale. The best salesperson is the people that listen to what the person is saying. So if you want to be great at sales, guess what? Listen more than you speak. That's why you have two ears and one mouth. Listen more than you speak. Because if you listen more than you speak, they will tell you, they will tell you everything that you need to know in order for you to make the sale, right? And guess what? That's it. That's it for today. So if you didn't get anything I said today, Go back and listen to the recording because I can tell you that everything that I'm telling you guys is what I went through. And I can tell you that I went through it and I got out of it. Listen, I'm so blessed and I'm so happy for everything I went through. And guess what? I'll do it all over again. I'll go through it all over again because the information, the knowledge, the things that I learned when I was at my bottom, 
I'm unstoppable today. I'm unstoppable. Nobody can tell me that I can't do nothing. Nobody can tell me anything because I know that I've been through the dark. I've been at the top. I've been at the bottom. I've been through it all. And I'm telling you from a person that went through it and I did it on my own. I got out of these situations on my own. I lost everything and I got it back on my own. But I can tell you that it happened for a reason because if I never went through it, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't still be involved in the industry. I'd probably be working a regular job and doing what everybody else is doing. But I'm so blessed and so fortunate that I went through these things. I went through a journey that most people on the journey with me, they gave up, they quit and they left. Why did I, why did I just continue to go? Because I know what I wanted. I know my why. I know that, listen, in order to get to where you need to go in life, you're going to have to go through some obstacles because if you don't go through any obstacles, you're not going to appreciate, you're not going to appreciate it when you get there. You just not. See, most people focus on the, the end journey. I'm focusing on the journey. See, it's through the journey. It's through the things you go through on your way to get in there. Listen, once you're at the top, you're at the top. But when you look back, you think about, wow, I went through so much and I'm here today. You're more appreciative because you know that you did something that the average person couldn't do. And what's that? Persist. Most people give up. Most people give up when life gets in the way. Most people give up. They cry. My mom didn't do this. My dad didn't do this. Listen, my dad wasn't there either. I got a stepdad. We can agree a stepdad and a dad ain't the same thing. I never had the opportunity to, to say, hey, dad. I never called a man dad a day in my life. So I had to be, I was a man since I was born. Even though I had, you know, other male figures, I was a man because I can agree that having a father figure in your life, most people can use it as an excuse or they can use it as a driving force to not be like that person. And that's who I am today. I use it as a driving force to not be like the person that had me. I didn't want to be the person that had me that had a bunch of kids and never did anything for him. I didn't want to be that person. I wanted my son to know who I am. I know my, I wanted my son to see me there every single day. I wanted my son, when, listen, when I was leaving on Saturday to come back to Maryland, my son started crying. He started crying. And that made me cry because guess what? He know that, guess what? His daddy got to go to work. But guess what? He knows daddy about to come right back. So that's why I do the business. I do it for somebody bigger than me. Take it off of you. Don't focus on yourself. Focus on other people. No matter if people stab you in the back, no matter if people put you through hell, listen, just do it for other people. Because I can tell you that the reason why I'm still here today because I still wanted to help other people. Even though I was stabbed in my back and you know the, the closest people tell me, you know, don't support me. They still don't support me. You know, sometimes I feel lonely, but guess what? Sometimes I feel lonely at the top, but I can help a lot of people get there with me one day. So all I can tell you guys is that just go out there and make it happen. Go through the journey. Don't focus on what you're going through and just focus on just keep going. Just keep, just never give up. Never quit because that's what, that's all. I just never quit. I just never gave up. And when I was going through hell, I just started learning more information. I just started studying more. I just started reading more books, watching more YouTube videos and just motivated myself because I knew that guess what? Nobody can get me out of my situation, but myself and nobody will get you out of your situation, but yourself. Nobody will get you to, to where you need to go, but yourself. So today just shift your focus and shift your mindset and just shift it to guess what? If it's meant to be, it's up to me. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. That's what I say to myself every single day. Listen, nobody's going to feed my son but me. Nobody's going to take care of my family but me. Nobody's going to do anything but me. So I don't look left. I don't look right. And I can tell you that I am today the person I am because I just never gave up and I never quit. So you know, I want to thank you guys for being on the call today. Um, and, you know, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, you know, for the next couple of minutes, feel free. So I do want to pass the call back to you, Mr. Thomas. I want to thank everyone for taking time of that busy schedule to just listen to me because I remember when I was at Applebee's, nobody wanted to listen to me. But I can tell you today that, you know, because I went through these things and I made it out of these situations that I can help more people because I know there's people like me that's gone through some of these things. And, you know, you might not be where you want to be right now, but I can tell you it's not the end. It's not the end because I've been there and I got out of it. And I know for a fact that you can do the same thing if you just focus on building yourself and focus on just growing as a person. Focus on bringing more value to yourself because the more valuable you become, the more money you earn. And that's what I can tell you that happened for me. I just took time to make myself more valuable today than I was yesterday. So I want to thank you guys again, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Wow, Mr. Cooper, hang in here. Folks, question. People, do you know 
and you and you and you matter of fact do all of you on the call know what you want i mean some of you don't some of you are like i never looked at it that way and you wonder why you're stuck know what you want and then go after it can we show mr cooper some love that was amazing you know one of the things that i love and admire about mr cooper he's so transparent so many people want to talk about what you need to do what you need they never talk about the mistakes they made see that's what let me take my my mistakes like tonight, come watch me fail. Mr. Cooper is so transparent. Be transparent to your people. Don't tell people, preach to them what to do if you haven't done it. Go do it and let them see it. I love it. And I love what he said, faith, <laughs> faith, face it until you make it. Not fake it. Don't fake it. Face it. Face it head on until you make it. Wow. Wow. Be the real deal. <laughs> wow. Don't lie about your results. Let others deal and help your team and put them first. I love that. And he says, be happy and grateful, dot, 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 every single day. What are you grateful for? Attitude of gratitude. I'm telling you guys, that's a big one. And giving, giving, that's a big one. Some you still can't give. Person develop every day works on it. One more time, everybody. Let's show Mr. Mr. Skill Cooper some love. Come on, let's get yeah, real quick, real quick. Real quick, and we're going to end this call, and I'm going to get rested up for the night's big, big, big showdown. Real quickly, show some love to Mr. Cooper, everybody. That was powerful. I love the transparency. I love how he had to go through what he had to go through to make him the man he is today. Like I said, everybody quit around him, but he couldn't because he knew he wanted what he wanted in his life. And he's still on target to be this number one youngest SVP in all of ACN. I want to say, sir, thank you once again. I always love your and I love it because you're just so transparent that people can't see if you can if, if you can do it they can do it and i just love the inspiration that you unload on people to inspire them to get past their ego get past their pride and go out there and really get down the muck of the mire and help build people up so once again sir thank you so much for your time folks tonight at six o'clock don't forget i'll be back everybody's everybody's uh camera on if your camera's not on we're going to exit you 